Let's talk about a topic, about a little secret that Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, doesn't really like to talk about, at least in the mainstream media. It's an open secret among the very technical people that work with Ethereum on a day-to-day -day basis, but for most people, it's a complete black box. They don't know about this. What am I talking about? I'm talking about minor extractable value, MEV, or in other words, front running sandwich trading, taking advantage of your usage of Ethereum, taking advantage of your trades. The technology of Ethereum is so transparent that people that are technical enough can front run you. So you are buying a certain asset, you think you're buying an asset, right? You use say Uniswap or something, you swap an asset, but there are bots in the background that you're not aware of that buy just quickly before you. They know that you're submitting the transaction, they buy quickly before you, they elevate the price, you buy then for this higher price, and then the bot directly sells after you again. He dumps on you. So he's sandwich trading. That's the technical term. He's taking advantage of your trades. He's front running you. He's making basically risk-free money and you get worse prices. So all the problems that centralized finance has, right? With like, for example, Robinhood selling the order flow to Citadel and Citadel then as a hedge fund front running you and elevating your prices and they just simply printing money. It's even worse in decentralized finance. Now, how does this all work? How bad is this problem actually? There is a, an explorer over here from Flashbot. So that's one of the tools you can use in order to front run other people. And they are currently estimating the total extracted front run value at 700 million almost. This is now slowing down somewhat. That has nothing to do with the merge of proof of stake or something. This has simply something to do with less trading activity recently in the crypto winter. We can see when there is activity, they are simply just printing money. They are extracting value. They're extracting money from your hard earned capital that you're trading back and forth. So what's actually going on here? What's going on is you submit your transaction. Okay, so you would submit your transaction to um, say Uniswap and that transaction, that swap is not directly in a block, right? It's not directly mined in a block. What happens is that transaction gets forwarded to something called a mempool. Okay, so a temporary storage. Now, why is that? because you submit your transaction with a certain gas fee, right? You tell the miners how much you're willing to pay in order to get this uh, transaction processed, okay? The mining fee. That's open, everybody knows about this, right? When you submit your transaction, you might have to pay, say, $10, $20, $30, whatever, how busy the Ethereum network is. You have to pay this gas fee, it's transparent, it's fair. Okay, so, so that's clear, but what happens is you submit your transaction to the mempool and now the miners are picking the transactions with the highest gas fee. They want to maximize their revenue as well, right? So they get all these transactions submitted into the mempool and the ones that have the highest gas fee, those are the transactions that in the end get processed. Okay, so in case you don't submit your transaction with a high enough gas fee, it might not be processed or it might be processed few blocks down the road or it might be processed at a later stage within the block. So even within the same block, you've got reshuffling based on how much you're willing to pay based on the gas fee you submitted for. Now what's going on here with the front running? What's happening is there are bots that look at this mempool all the time and they look at how much is, for example, your purchase transaction moving the price. Okay, And they look, for example, how much slippage tolerance do you have for your uh, purchase transaction, right? So let's say you, you buy on Uniswap and you say, I'm okay even if my price is, say, 1% worse than what I initially thought. The reason why I do this is because prices are always fluctuating and you don't want to always get failed transactions, right? So you put a bit of tolerance in there, say one or 2%. Now what happens is these front run bots see this, they see, okay, your transaction would still be fine even if the price goes against you for say 2%. So what they do is they submit their purchase transaction to elevate the price, just those 2%. They buy before you, they do this 
by submitting with a higher gas fee, okay, so they're willing to pay the miner more in order to be higher in the block, they get prioritized, they purchase, the price gets elevated, then your transaction goes through for this elevated price, and then they submit another transaction to sell directly afterwards again. And now you bought for the worst price, the 2% slippage that you're willing to take, you actually got that, right? You got 2% worse of a price. And this happens all the time constantly. And there are even websites that track these transactions in detail. For example, this one here, 0MEV. So this is uh, a guy who also doesn't really like this whole MEV play, right? How everybody gets front run, how basically everybody's extracting capital from you simply just because you don't know these details. Details. And you can see uh, via an algorithm uh, what kind of transactions have been made here and that made money for the people. So, for example, here, right? Here was a transaction. He front ran, he did a sandwich trade. This was a particular uh, block, and $64 was extracted from the person trading here. And you can go into the details, you can actually see what's going on. So, here is a front run, here is a back run, here is a sandwich, and here is the amount of money that this person has lost. Okay, so there was somebody who saw, okay, there is a certain swap happening. And that uh, person then got front run by somebody else who bought before that with a higher uh, gas fee. And so there are explorers around this. There are many websites around this that look at what kind of people are getting front run, what kind of bots are out there, how much money are those bots doing. They make uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, of course, uh, because when we look at just this, right, the extractable value, 700 million, a single bot can easily make $100,000 uh, a month, right? I've seen one bot that made around $50,000 a month um, that is active on the Binance Smart Chain. So you can imagine when you are um, working with a larger blockchain such as uh, Ethereum that these numbers quickly go higher again. So this is not unique to Ethereum. This is relatively widespread for pretty much any um, Ethereum compatible chain. You've got that issue that these transactions, they get bundled up and that they are front run bots that scan the mempool and simply front run you. But I think this is a problem and I think this is not being discussed enough because what is the solution to all of this? The solution would be you try to avoid that people can just submit transactions with higher gas and they can reshuffle the order in the block, right, to take advantage of you. Uh, it's obviously hard because it's a decentralized system and there is no one unique state that everybody should follow. It's different to centralized finance, right? In centralized finance, you have like this one server and these high frequency traders like Citadel um, that do the same thing. They simply just position their server or their, their um, computer closer to the trading desk, right? So they, they go very close. They have like very fast connections and like just a few milliseconds faster. You can basically beat than the other people and you can properly front run. There is no central server for Ethereum. So it's harder to come up with a system that would avoid this reshuffling. But instead of trying to focus on this, what Ethereum and what many other uh, foundations and people are doing is they simply try to avoid centralization. They think MEV is okay. It's okay to front run the random retail trailer, uh, trader. The only thing we have to make sure of is that there's not only one person that has like the very best algorithm that then makes the most money out of this and that it all becomes centralized to this one single miner that has the best algorithm. So that's kind of like the worry that Ethereum has. The worry is we don't want to have just one miner. We want to have many miners and keep it somewhat decentralized. It's okay to kind of rip off the retail investor. Right? You can think of this whatever, whatever you think. I think... It's a problem, right? If you are technical enough to build these front run bots, of course, all power to you. But it is a problem, especially if we want to have broad scale adoption, because at some point, this kind of little secret will leak more and more. This is just one video, but obviously, this has even been discussed on the Lex uh, podcast here. Obviously, this message will spread over time and we should rather uh, think long term, right? We shouldn't just think of how can we extract a lot of money now and maybe for a few more months, maybe one or two years. We should think about how can we improve adoption that these things don't happen uh, 
don't happen over the long term, right? That these don't continue happening because people will get scared when they know how much they're actually uh, losing with all of this. So that's a little secret I wanted to share. How can you protect yourself from all of this? There are several mechanisms. Um, obviously, when you trade in a centralized manner, for example, on Binance, you don't have that problem, but then you've got other problems, right? Binance might shut down similar to uh, FTX. So if you're trading in a decentralized manner, there's only a few things you can do. You can, for example, try to trade smaller amounts that don't move the market too much. So you shouldn't have too much of a price impact, less than 1% per order is considered somewhat safe because you do have your uh, transaction fees when you're buying and selling. So you need to have a minimum uh, amount of percentage that you move the price. And then also your slippage shouldn't be too large. So if you set a small slippage and you break up your transactions into several small transactions, you should be relatively safe. But always, especially when transactions don't go through, then be cautious. Don't just submit a second transaction because it might be that a front run bot just bought before you and waiting for your second transaction to go through. So whenever you submit something with small slippage on a small altcoin that potentially might move the price a little bit, be careful when transactions fail. Rather, wait for a while until you submit your second transaction. Otherwise, front run bots just dump on you. That's one way. Of course, there's way more to this, so feel free to simply just research this now. So if you've never done any research around this, feel free to check out MEV right, and uh, read a few articles on this. This is just a little intro. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have never seen anything like this, right, then uh, feel free to also give this a like. Hope this helped a bit. And of course, subscribing would be appreciated as well. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.